Here are five ways to use the high ground advantage like the pros. Presented by Fortnite Master. A couple of weeks ago, we made a video on the advantages of the high ground. Now we're going to explain exactly how to convert that high ground advantage into more kills and eventually wins. We're going to go over some tips to help you track your opponents, block them from taking height, and land some solid shots. Disclaimer that this guide might seem basic to veteran players. The goal was to thoroughly break down the important concepts for using high ground advantage, as well as give some specific tricks to help with each. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. Knowing how to effectively track your opponents while on the high ground is an essential part of playing height. This skill alone will help you immensely with every other tip in this video. A lot of this comes with good game sense, which will improve over time with more practice and experience holding high ground. As your game sense improves, you will start predicting exactly what opponents will do and how they will react in most situations, but that does not mean there aren't some concrete tips to help you track your enemies. Our first tip is getting used to audio cues. Vertical audio in Fortnite isn't the best, but when you have height, it doesn't matter as much because you know the sounds are coming from somewhere below you. And it's usually pretty easy to tell whether a sound is coming from behind or one of your sides, allowing you to react accordingly. Our second tip is to keep an eye out for builds that are still fresh, aka they're not finished building yet. It's easy to notice somebody building up on you, but it's much harder to track an opponent who has decided to drop down and reposition or turtle up. When an enemy drops down, tracking them is even more important. If you lose them for too long, they'll have enough time to heal up, or worse, they could knock down your structure without you realizing. But when they drop down, there's usually a trail of fresh builds to follow. Whether they drop with builds, edit their way down, or turtle up, you should be able to spot something that will give you an idea of their location. Being able to track your opponents, while essential, is only the first step to converting your high ground advantage. In order to take full advantage of high ground, it's best to keep height in most situations. We see a lot of overeager players get high ground and then immediately jump down for a shot, needlessly giving up their advantage. Learning how to keep high ground while tracking and taking shots is vital. Let's start with maintaining high ground against another good player trying to retake. At a high level, Fortnite is an extremely fast game. Hesitating just one second before reacting can easily mean losing height against a good player. A decent habit to get into is listening and immediately reacting to the sound of somebody building up, instead of waiting for visual confirmation. If you react right away when you hear somebody building, you can usually keep high ground, whereas you're more likely to lose height if you wait until you see the player. Although each situation is unique, most of the time, ramping with floors and walls over other players is enough to maintain height, assuming you react quickly enough. And unless you plan on blocking them to go for an edit play, try to stay two levels above your opponent to give yourself some leeway to react. Anytime you're only a single level above your opponent, you should already be thinking about how exactly you would build up to keep height if they go for a retake. If you get blocked with a pyramid from a player below, train your reactions to immediately pull out your pickaxe to break through, or do a side jump if possible and build up from there. In practice, this seems to be the two most effective reactions in this situation. Another tip for keeping high ground is connecting your structure to a pre-existing build or mountain. This makes it significantly harder, if not impossible, for the enemy to knock you down, essentially removing one of their best plays as an option. Note that this isn't always possible, but it's a great tool to have in your back pocket for those times that it does come in handy. Once you're comfortable with tracking enemies and keeping high ground, it's time to start thinking about some edit plays. As a rule of thumb, if an enemy is close enough, where you can block them with a floor slash pyramid, then that's almost always what you should be doing. Trying to shoot them first when they're close is bad for a couple of reasons. First, even if you land the shot, it's pretty easy for them to trade back. Second, they could simply just eat that shot and then take high ground because you failed to block them. Blocking them then making an edit play is much better because you can stop their retake and get an opportunity to land a shot. Most players' immediate reaction after getting blocked by a floor is to turn and go in a different direction, giving you a free shot if you make a quick edit. Every once in a while, you'll run into a player that knows what you're trying to do and will wait for the edit, but you can counter this pretty easily by quickly glancing at them through the fresh build. If they look like they're ADSing with the pump waiting for the edit, then probably don't make the most obvious play. In this situation, you'll need to make a more unexpected edit play or just take a different angle. These are some techniques we'll cover in future videos. 
If you're already comfortable blocking and editing on enemies, try getting into the habit of blocking with both a floor and a pyramid, then double editing for the shot. If you block a really good player with a floor, their immediate reaction will often be to place their own pyramid on top, preventing you from making the edit play. If you get used to blocking with both, then double editing, it will help you get a lot more shots against top players. Here are some more edits you can try using to take advantage of the high ground. The ramp flip is useful when you've just ramped over on the enemy and are looking for a quick shot. This edit works best when you can fluidly make the edit and hit the shot without stopping. The ramp floor edit can be used similarly. When you ramp over somebody with the floor underneath, which is a good habit to get into, you can double edit to get the drop on your opponent. If the enemies are too far to physically block with a build, take the free shots on them. So many players will leave themselves exposed when building up. Take advantage of those opportunities to get a solid shotgun shot or short AR slash SMG spray. Note that there are a couple of ways to do this. The first is to jump on top of the player for a shotgun shot. Note that if you're doing this, be prepared to catch yourself or block them with the floor immediately after taking the shot. Catching yourself is good because it prevents you from falling into their box after the shot, which kind of just turns the situation into a 50-50 shotgun battle of whoever can hit their shots. And blocking them after landing the shot just makes it easier to keep the high ground. Tifu Classic is a great example of this in practice. It's when you have the high ground and you jump off of your own floor, land a shotgun shot on someone below, then quickly catch yourself with another floor. The trick itself is simple, but it's something you will find yourself using often. If they're a little too far away to jump on them, a solid AR or SMG spray can do wonders. Especially when a player is building up with their top exposed, an accurate spray can absolutely laser people. With a couple of decent headshots in the spray, you can easily get somebody to one shot if not straight up down them. You can also use your high ground advantage by dropping on top of people. Maintaining height is still important, but sometimes the play is to drop down on an opponent from an unexpected angle. Think of it as one of your best options to get a free finishing blow. Still, you don't want to give up height for free. We'd say don't drop unless you're confident you can kill the enemy or at least get a really chunky shot for it. The ideal situation would be if an opponent is running in the open and doesn't notice you, aka you're likely to get at least one free shot without them trading back. There are some situations in which you should probably drop, even if they aren't low health. If you hear an enemy knocking you down, quickly try and listen and locate their position, then drop on them while they're still trying to break builds. It works best if you drop while they're in the middle of breaking or shooting builds, as they're less likely to see or hear you coming. If they have already finished breaking you out, then they probably are waiting for you to fall. If that's the case, we'd recommend trying to catch yourself and build back up instead of going for the shot. If they're turtling, it's a little different as you may be forced to drop in order to fight for a wall or get them to react. We'll have a video all about turtling in the coming weeks, so rest easy if you have trouble dealing with players turtling or turtling yourself. Thank you guys once again for watching this video. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be alerted whenever we release a new video. If you love our content, feel free to share it with your friends, family, distant relatives, your dog, or any other loved ones. From all of us at Fortnite Master, my name is The Saved One, and we're out. Peace.